Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk to you about my ears are plugged up. Coming right up. Okay, so when you think my ears are plugged up, we need to understand a few things before we jump into that topic. Now, most people wonder, is this the outer ear, the canal is the middle ear, and the inner ear is the eardrum and beyond? And that's not true. The reality is that this part, the penna, the ear canal is the outer ear. The middle ear is the eardrum and the bones. The inner ear is the cochlea, that little snailing kind of thing. And then the retrochochlear or beyond the cochlea is all those nerves that come up. So we have those nerves and they cross over and go up to the left hemisphere. Now they also go up to the right hemisphere. See, so what most people don't realize is in my left hemisphere, that's where I'm dealing with speech specifically to audiology here. In the right side, we're dealing with the music side. So we're just focusing more on what the ears are dealing with. Did you know that when you sing, you have this thing called the corpus callosum? It's the, it's the communication with the right and left brains. And what happens is that when you sing, you actually innervate the corpus callosum and both sides of your brain actually work together. And it's one of the very few time frames that that might happen. Now, some people have postulated that maybe violins do that, but, but singing is a international cultural change that happens with every single culture, but it happens in the brain and happens with both sides of the brain. Now, let's back up here. So we want to talk a little bit further. So when your ears feel plugged up, what some people are asking the question, is it just wax? And yes, that can happen. I had a friend of mine named Kathleen. She comes to my classes I teach. And uh, she, was, she asked a question. She texted me, oh my gosh, my right ear is plugged up. And I said, yeah, get into the clinic. We checked out her ear. It was just needing to be flushed out. We did that. She's on the road. Everything's fine again. And it can just be wax. But sometimes there's this thing called eustachian tube dysfunction or ET dysfunction or the pressure problems. What happens, and we're gonna show you some pictures of this. So the middle ear has the eardrum and the bones. But what happens is that this is an enclosed space and it has to be opened up by the eustachian tube. Now that happens in the top of the mouth near your, where your nasal cavities kind of flow down as well. And so what happens is if you have problems with your eustachian tube or you're, you're stuffed up, you're sick some way, what will, what will occur, and it happens all the time in, in uh, cold and flu seasons, it happens in allergy seasons, and you get plugged up and you, get, you don't hear as well. What you're, you're feeling like is maybe as much as 30 decibels of knockoff of hearing. Well, that's a big deal because every 10 decibels in the brain is a doubling effect. So basically you're having a 300% hearing loss, just like that. And then when it pops open, you, holy cow. Now it's not normally that much if you just have a little pressure problems. Maybe you drop down 150% worse and then get back up to normal. So it might be 15 decibels of knockoff. It might be 10 decibels of knockoff, but it's a significant thing and it makes people wonder. The first thing you need to find out is from your audiologist. What's going on? Because we can do this thing called a tympanogram. So that tympanogram will actually tell us if you've got pressure problems. But the audiologist is also gonna know if you have any wax in your ears that might be clogging it up. I have had patients come in and I wasn't sure that really was the issue as because you look at it, it was mostly clear of wax, but the wax was sitting on the eardrum and pressing against it. It wasn't covering up the whole area, but once we remove that, oh my gosh, my hearing's back. And that actually can happen as well. So when do I know I have an ear infection? 
Well, one of the things that you can do is this thing called a Valsalva maneuver. So what you're gonna do is plug up your nose and then you're gonna blow really hard as if you're like blowing your nose. See, when you do this, I mean, when you blow your nose and you cover up your mouth and you do this blowing kind of fun function, hopefully into a, a napkin, but so you're, you're blowing your nose out. What you're doing is you're putting some pressure and the only way for it, the, the, the snot to come out is through your nose. But if you're closing off your nose, there's no other place for that to go other than the eustachian tube. What's fascinating, I'm a history buff. I love this stuff. And so during World War II, you had pilots who were up at tens of thousands of feet. And so they, I mean, and sometimes just a few thousand feet, but they had to drop down to the deck and people go, well, why would they have to do this? Because let's say they were a Navy pilot and he's in a plane and he's, you know, he's diving around. He could be diving around trying to get away from the Japanese Zeros, for instance, that, that had much more maneuver, maneuverability. Hard for me to say. Uh, so he'd be diving around and then once he got into his attack position, he'd see a carrier down there. And so that he would kind of, uh, he would do this Valsalva maneuver that would blow out his ears because if he did this and he didn't, and he didn't do the dive or he went into the dive and he didn't blow out his ear, what would happen is that his ears or his eardrums would pop. And so he'd have a significant hearing loss. So that Valsalva maneuver is something easy that you can do. Ear, nose and throat physicians will tell uh, patients, you can do this five, six times a day to help kind of release the pressure. But if you've tried this many times and you still have that massive pressure that goes on, it's probably time. Now, one of the things that you always look at when you think about the sinuses, if you have clear fluid coming out of your sinus, and for a person who's had bunches of sinus infections, one of the things you always look for is do you have blood in your sinuses, which could be a problem. You can also, you also want to think about a uh, yellowish type of fluid. Oh, that's a sinus infection or a greenish type of fluid that can also be a sinus infection as well. You're definitely sick and that is a bacterial or a maybe viral infection. But bacterial infections, that's something very simple for antibiotics to fix. So that's why your ear, nose and throat physician and your general physicians who understand what they're taking care of for you can do. That's when you might have an, a, a middle ear infection. It's not an inner ear infection, totally different thing. A middle ear infection is this real, <coughs> a real big problem that happens for the person and they have this go on for a long time. And no matter what they do, they can't clear it. The antibiotics can't clear it. The, the, you know, all the other medications that they're trying won't help. So you'll have an ear, nose and throat physician who will do this for you. It's called a myringotomy. What they do is they take a little tiny cut right to the bottom front portion of your ear and they'll cut in and then they'll put a vacuum through and suction out all the fluid. And it's an excellent kind of thing. So they myrogotomy with a PE tube, pressure equalization tube. And that pressure equalization tube, they'll pop it in there. Now there's different types of tubes. What that, that tube might be, if they wanna have a long-term effect, they'll kind of be a metally type of tube that can stay in there for year after year. And that's a person who has chronic or many ear infections. But most people, they wanna put a plastic-ish type of tube. And it's totally sterile, don't worry about that. It's not gonna hurt your hearing. And I'll explain that here in just a second. But um, that PE tube just helps the pressure so that the eardrum can get a release because the eustachian tube is not giving it a release. You see, the fluid in your ear builds up because the eustachian tube closes off and doesn't allow any kind of a release of air. And that is a vacuum area. And it starts to suck out this mucus fluid that fills up into that, that ear canal space.
Now, before antibiotics were around, did you know that people died of, of just simple ear infections? Because it would infect all the way into the meningeal layer and cause high fevers and boom, people died. So that's one of the things that happens. Now, I want to tell you about a patient. It was actually a, a, a couple patients. It was a, 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 a set of twins. And they were uh, 21 years old, and they were the worst eardrums I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, they had, they had uh, problems all over the eardrum with, with many perforations. And they were worried about their hearing. And they've been told by everyone else, oh my gosh, you guys have to have massive hearing loss. Do you know what their hearing loss was? Instead of zero, perfect hearing all the way up at the top, they had maybe 15 to 20 decibel hearing loss. There's just a little bit. Now, if they had a tympanoplasty, which is a replacement of the eardrum, they might come back to perfect. But frankly, they were so close to it, it wasn't a big deal. And so that's some of the difficulty that we have because we don't understand what we're dealing with here. So when you think you have a middle ear infection, you might, but it probably needs to have a little bit of antibiotics. It might have to have some type of, you know, flushing. You can also flush your sinuses out that can help that. So there's a lot of little things that you can do to make a difference in your life. And this is one of the areas that an audiologist can help you with giving you some understanding. Now, when it comes out of the purview of the audiologist, he or she is gonna send you off to the ear physician. Don't worry about that. The ear physician can definitely help you, but it's actually cheaper, a little less expensive to go to the audiologist and find out if it's something that needs to be done. And by the way, the ear physician, a great physician, has audiologists that the patient has to go to first. So guess what? If you think you're gonna to go to the ear physician first, you're gonna see the audiologist and then the ear physician. So why not just see the audiologist and find out if it is that significant of a problem? Because I, I refer people two or three times a week just because of that issue. And so it's something that we can definitely help you with. But ears being plugged up is not a problem when you get it checked up. So come and see us, check us out, subscribe. Thank you so much.